Let's take you to Oshun State now, where there are reports emerging of politicians making considerable donations in a bid to induce voters to side with them, allegedly. The alarm has been raised by the good governance group, Yaga. It says that according to its pre-election findings, food items and livestock have been distributed to people in Oshun State as part of the campaign strategy being used by the political parties. The group has expressed grave concern about this, warning that voter induced could undermine the legitimacy of the result of the election and create an unequal playing field for the candidates. There are 15 contestants with the candidates from the APC, the PDP, the Labour Party, the SDP and the Accord Party considered to be the major contenders. Well, on this, let's cross live to the Oshun State capital of Shobo and speak to the lawyer and executive director of Yaga Africa, Samson Itodo. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Mr. Itodo, for talking to us. Uh, tell us about your organization's pre-election investigations in Oshun State and what you found with regard to voter inducement. Well, Thank you very much, Charles, and, and good evening, Nigerians um, from Oshobo. Well, like you stated in your um, preliminary remark, um, Yaga Africa published and released this report um, on the pre-election environment for Oshun State. And this afternoon, um, we highlighted a few issues that are of major concern um, to us as Yaga Africa and um, drawing the attention of critical stakeholders um, to those issues um, because they have huge potential of undermining the integrity of the Saturday elections um, if not addressed. And one of the issues that we highlighted was voter inducement. Now, before this election in April, Yaga Africa deployed long-term observers in all 30 local governments of Washun State. And these observers did observe the conduct of campaigns, observed the conduct of INEC and its preparations, also the security agencies, and then voter education. And our major finding clearly shows that in the build-up to this election, politicians across a large number of, polling, of, of um, local governments were involved in voter inducement and they were distributing um, livestock as well as cash materials and food materials to voters in a bid um, to secure the votes of the voters. And this is very disturbing. Um, one of the other issues we raised was the issue around election security. The fact that in the build up to this election, we witnessed you know, increased activities of cult groups and political thugs that led to the death of about three people. Um, we've seen cases where, and received reports as well, where court groups have threatened to disrupt the elections if the APC and the PDP does not pay them. Uh, this was quite rampant in a few LGAs. Um, that's also one of the issues that we raised, and we also, you know, called on the um, the police, you know, to make a definite statement on you know, the engagement of the Amotecons, which is a state-owned security outfit. Because our understanding is that the Amotecons are not part of the security architecture for elections. They are not a member of the Interagency Committee on Election Security. So Yaga Africa expects that on Saturday, we would not witness the recruitment or engagement of the Amotecons. The other issue we raised was a concern around the imbalance in the distribution of voters to polling units. You recall INEC created additional polling units, and what we experienced in Ikiti was in some polling units, though not statistically significant, but people were disenfranchised because they showed up at polling units where their PVCs indicated they were meant to vote, but their names were not found on the Beavers machine. And what possibly had happened was that these persons were allocated to new polling units but INEC didn't communicate um, that to the voters. Uh, and lastly, we also raised the issue um, of the PVCs. We expect that INEC will publish the disaggregated data of collected PVCs for this election. Good thing, INEC indicated that 76% 
of registered voters have collected their PVCs as at 10th of July. That's about six days to the elections. But INEC, in the stakeholders meeting um, on um, Tuesday, the chairman told the, the stakeholders that on Friday, INEC will publish the disaggregated data. And people will wonder, why is the disaggregated data of PVCs important for the credibility of the process? It is important because the new guidelines issued by INEC clearly states that in the determination of the conclusiveness of an election or in the application of the margin of lead principle, what INEC will consider because of the provisions of the new Electoral Act is the total number of PVCs collected per polling unit. And so if INEC is going to determine the conclusiveness of an election, and in particular this election, based on the total number of PVCs collected, then it is incumbent on the Electoral Commission to release those figures. And they've made a commitment. So we expect that by tomorrow, INEC will release the total number of PVCs collected per polling station. Okay, well, you've said a lot there, and we appreciate the work that you've done and uh, the fact that you're bringing these things to light because they're all very crucial points. But if I, if I could ask you to keep your answers, uh, the next couple of answers exceedingly brief, uh, that would be appreciated. You talked about these inducements that were being given out in uh, Oshun State. Um, was it being given out by some of the parties or all of the parties? Based on our report, all of the parties were involved in voter inducement, and particularly the two major political parties were involved in inducement. We've also um, thoughts of um, these candidates, you know, making statements um, and public declaration that they are willing to spend um, whatever it takes, you know, to induce voters to secure their votes. That is very disturbing. That is highly condemnable and we shouldn't in any way tolerate it. And we hope that the voters will not yield um, you know, to this inducement by political actors because when they sell their votes, they actually sell their power and politicians will stop at nothing but to make people powerless because they don't want to be held accountable. And I think that that's one of the, the reasons um, um, that having election monitors, election observers, and civil society groups monitoring the, ball the ballot is absolutely crucial. But beyond these problems that you've found, and we've got about a, a minute or so left, what sense do you have of how prepared all those charged with ensuring the proper conduct of the elections are, including the Electoral Commission, INEC, and the security agencies, briefly? From the IAG Africa standpoint, we are satisfied with the level of preparations from INEC and the police. This afternoon, we had a meeting with the DIG at the civil society meeting. They've given all the assurances that they are fully prepared. What we have stated is AKT was successful. Uh, we hope that the stakeholders do not overestimate their capacity um, as well as underestimate the quantum of work that is ahead of them. Oshun is not AKT. Oshun has 30 local governments, more polling units, and more registered voters. But we give them the benefit of doubt. And for us at Yaga Africa, we would be here to support this process and ensure that the process meets the integrity test. Okay, Samson, I want to thank you very much indeed. We appreciate the time that you've taken to talk to us. Samson Itodo is a lawyer and executive director of uh, Yaga Africa.